Back for more from the Bronx. Welcome in. We're in the eight. Two men out. John Shambi along with Chris Singleton. So two down and stepping in for the Yankees, Josh Donaldson. And there's no doubt that they'll feed off the energy from this crowd, right? I mean, yeah, I'd say the intensity level has gone up a few notches for sure. These home fans, they are making a lot of noise, putting pressure on that pitcher out there. Next one misses at one and one. Next offering is in for a strike. Get a little frustrated with the strike zone. Strike three. Got him swinging. Huge strike out there. He's in a tough spot. Had to make a great pitch. Did it. Got the strikeout. Gets out of the jam. Clearly, he's happy with those results. You can never be like me. So they turn to the lefty in this spot. Wandy Peralta. This softball has been really good against left-handed hitters. Well, I think that what makes him so tough against left-handers is he hides the ball for a long time. And from that same side, harder for you to determine which part of the plate it's going to end up on. And a pitch. Smith swings through that one there. Next pitch has popped up. Squeezes it. And a quick out number one. Well, such a confidence boost for a reliever to come into the ball game and get the first hitter he faces. Just makes everything slow down a little bit. And then from there can really settle in. The pitch. McNeil in the box now. Takes a cold strike. On the ground, Connor Falefa collects it. Connor Falefa throws the first in time. Two up, two down. The the catcher. Come on. Tomas Nito oh. with the plate. This is a guy who's in the lineup first and foremost because of what he contributes defensively, Chris. And when you talk about preventing runs from being scored, this guy is a big contributor. I was always told it's hard to take you off the field when you play really good defense, especially at a premier position, and that's what he does. Here's a 1-1. Oh. That one missed. The hitting's going to come around. He's going to figure it out. But right now, his big asset is the way he plays the game on defense. The 2-1. This is a really good feeling for a hitter. At this point in the ball game, you know that they don't want to walk you, so you're going to get a pitch to hit. You just better not miss it. The 3-1 in for a strike, full count. The 3-2 is off the outside edge, and that is ball four. Brandon Nimmo up now for the Mets. Try to keep that hitting streak alive. Ten-game hitting streak for the young man. The pitch. That one's in there. That's strike one. Yeah, I'm surprised we didn't see a visit from the pitching coach here. Just to remind him, focus on the hitter. Don't worry about anything else. Tied at four. And it's fouled away. Two gone. The possible go-ahead run at first. Light drive, and that's a base hit. Throw stops the lead runner at second. Two on and two out. Well, he keeps the hitting streak going with that ninth inning knock right there. Coming through under pressure, and not the ideal way to get the job done, Boog, but it works. You know, only once during DiMaggio's famous hitting streak did he wait till the ninth inning to extend it. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, and the best thing to do is get that thing out of the way early. No doubt about it. You can move on with the game. Otherwise, you start gripping the bat a little tighter as the game progresses towards the end. Next offering is downstairs. Nito over at second. Nimmo at first, two out of the inning. 
Next pitch misses, and it's two and one. Good spot for the hitter. Definitely has the advantage in this count with runners on. Look for him to be aggressive on this next pitch. Bounce to third. Reaches on the backhand, but it's through. Goes to third, but he beats it. And everyone's safe. There's something about pulling one down the line and shooting it through the infield that's just so satisfying as a hitter. It's just fun turning on a pitch like he did right there. First and third, two away. Here's Luis Guillorme. pitch looking for some insurance or as our friends down in the south would say insurance no matter how you say it we know what you mean at the belt and fires that one lifted to left base hit and a run into score that's now three hits in a row for the offense that's a ball that a lot of times you'll see the shortstop or left fielder be able to get to if it hangs up in the air long enough but right there it just died and found a way to drop in on the green stuff for base hit. New pitcher for the Yankees, Lucas Litke. And his job is to collect quick outs and keep his team within striking distance. J.D. Davis up now for the Mets. Move to second. Marte dives back in. And a pitch. Nope. And takes low for ball one. Ball one, no strike. Move to second, and he's back in easily. Another throw to second, and he's back in that time as well. The 1 0. Two outs, a couple of base runners at first and second. Not even close there, and it's 2 and 1. Two outs. Rips one to right, and there's a hit. Marte coming home. Not in time. He's safe. Just so sound in his mechanics. Hits against a firm front side, and the hands just continue to carry through the middle of the field. And next for the Mets, Mark Canna. One for three. And here it comes. On the ground, right side. To second, there's Connor Falefa. Inning ends, and that stops the bleeding. Six, seven, eight scheduled to start the bottom of the ninth. It's the Mets seven and the Yankees four. So they turn to Edwin Diaz out of the pen, and he'll feature a hard slider to work off his fastball. Back here in New York, here is Glaber Torres. The Yanks in striking distance, but have some work to do. Boog, it starts with the leadoff, man. I need a good at bat out of him right here. Oh, and two as he waves at that one. Looking at Torres, have to say, he's one of the most impressive young players I've seen in recent years. Well, no question about it. His future is very bright. The city, the organization, both are excited about him. He has a lot to look forward to. The pitch on Duhar. Watches that one for a strike. Standing in here with one down. The next pitch misses. And the count even one and one. Next pitch is inside. Now two balls and a strike. Next pitch is outside. The Yankees looking to rally. Left field, Canna moving under it. And there's two away. 
just pull off of it a little bit right there that front shoulder coming open instead of staying closed if he does that he's going to be able to go up the middle the other way with some authority instead of a fly out to left the pitch and that one fouled off now well, this is just par for the course these days huge fastballs coming out of the bullpen and he's down 0-2 as he swings through it. Well, you got the hitter already chasing that nasty slider. If you're on the mound, you just want to expand the zone right now. Get a swing and miss and get through this at bat. Down to their final strike. They had a foul ball. 1-2 now. Misses off the plate. It's two and two. Well, this is a guy that can be frustrating for pitchers because he fouls off so right through there. Got him. Ball game. Back here in Queens with Chris Singleton. I'm John Shambi. Thanks for joining us. Nobody out here in inning number eight. Back here at the ballpark. Here's the catcher, James McCann. Corner. How much of a distraction those fans behind home plate are to the opposing pitcher. I mean, they are into it. They're trying to will this club back into this ball game. There's a strike. Activity in the bullpen. Lake Trinan, the hard throwing righty, is up and loose of it. Next offering in the dirt. Ball one. One one to McCann. Yeah, that's outside. At this point in the game, you cannot issue free passes. He's going to have to challenge this hitter. Hitter's got to be ready to swing it. Swings and misses. And it's three and two. The tying run at the plate. And McCann fouls it off. And that's ball four. What a battle. It's not always easy laying off a 3 2 pitch. And I tell you what, he earned that walk. Brandon Nimmo up now for the Mets. Nimmo. the pitch with a single base runner because of all the power they are dangerous to tie this thing up or take the lead and the righty deals and the 1 0 misses low these home fans they are making a lot of noise putting pressure on that pitcher out there 2 0 swing and a pop up Turner on the move one down that was a good hard fastball with some nice ride up in the zone right there. Hitter looked like he was on it, but I think that velocity at the end just beat him. Instead of a line drive or something hit deep, it's a pop-up and an easy out for the defense. 
And the pitch. Marte at the plate and takes high there. Righty delivers. That misses off the outside edge. Righty to the plate. It misses, and it's 3-0. And, oh. The other way. That's a base hit. Quick throw back in. Lead runner holds it second with one gone. Showed some really nice patience That's in that at bat. Worked himself That's into a good go. count. Nice job of driving that pitch the other way on a line. You know, hitters, they take so many reps in the cages working on going to the opposite field, and it doesn't always translate into the game, but right there it did, and he did it perfectly. A chance now to even the score and maybe extend this game. Here's Francisco Lindor. Out towards right center field. Betts makes the play. Out number two. So now it's the four-hole hitter, Pete Alonso. This is what stat nerds like myself might call a high-leverage situation. Yeah, but I'm not sure what the numbers say, but clearly an at-bat that could change the course of this game dramatically. That's in for a strike. And I know you want to be patient as a hitter, but you got to be ready to jump on the first thing straight. And he got one right there, but left the bat on his shoulder. Kicks and fires to the left side, but it is well fouled. Big spot, two out, both the tying and go-ahead runs are aboard. In the dirt. Nothing happening on the bases, though. offering way off the plate. And yeah, the right hater deals. Swing and a miss, and he struck him out. Third out. Well, this guy competes hard. You see the emotion there. I love it. Great job of getting out of the jam. Set to start the ninth in this one. And the batter down, Austin Barnes. The second baseman, Austin Barnes. That one's in there, and it's 0 1. Two of the most potent offenses in the game squaring off. Ground ball up the middle. Lindor on the first. One up, one down. These two offenses could put up runs in a hurry. Trey Turner at the plate. Play. Hmm. The wind of the pitch. Oh. And delivers outside. Oh. Called strike right there. It a strike. And a foul ball. One down, base is empty. And he hits a ground ball right side, and that's just foul. The fastball at the bottom of the zone can be very effective. Just got to keep it on the corners. Stays alive. The wind of the pitch. Swing and a line drive caught. Now batter. Right field. Now it's Mookie Betts. Betts. Not looking like they'll be adding any insurance runs heading to the bottom of the ninth, so it's going to be on the bullpen to hold this lead. And first offering is fouled off. Right-handed reliever. 
in the air left side canna gets under it and that is that five six and seven will lead things off in the bottom of the night it's the dodgers four and the mets three to the mound now they turn to blake china and he'll work on holding this lead number 49 back here at city field here's the left fielder mark canna and there's no doubt that they'll feed off the energy from this crowd, right? I mean, yeah, I'd say the intensity level has gone up a few notches for sure. First pitch, just misses. Now, Boog, this is a real tough place for visiting teams to come in and close out ball games for a win. Next offering misses, ball two. That's where you want it. It's a good miss. Tap dances out of the way of that one. I almost feel like he's frustrated a little bit. He wants to be challenged. Here comes a pitch. There's a strike. Good plate appearance there. Able to take the walk. They're not ready to go home quite yet. No outs. Runner at first. Eduardo Escobar getting ready to hit. Oh, he's been having a great year this year and hitting home runs at a good clip. And the matchup is very favorable. First pitch, and that's in for a strike. All season long, he's racked up a number of saves, and sometimes the adrenaline doesn't get high enough until there's a runner or two on base. Next offering is in for a strike. With two strikes, may see some movement over there at first base, trying to stay out of a double play here. The one two in the dirt no advance good job behind the dish two two foul ball there definitely got the hitter conscious of the pitch inside really think the outer half is open and a foul ball he stays alive dives but it's off his glove and he'll be safe at first well things that lead to big innings other than hits or home runs are of course walks and errors three base runners and they've been gifted with both so far this inning and that'll make any manager in the dugout just stew a little bit and i'm sure he is right now davis in the box now takes a cold strike Next one misses, and that's ball one. And a pitch. Inside just missed. Oh, they're applying pressure. Quality at bats, quality swings right now, and see this offense doing it one man to the next, showing a lot of fight right now. They're making it difficult for the back end of this bullpen to close out this game. Nobody out. Both the tying and winning runs on base. And that one goes straight to the backstop. Tag safe. And a wild pitch, and both runners are in scoring position. Swing and a pop-up. Makes the grab, and there's one down. So two in scoring position with one out. Here's the second baseman, Jeff McNeil. Well, there's a reason why he's at the bottom of the order. Struggling as of late, but a calling for the intentional walk, and that loads up the bases. And the force play is now in order. So bases loaded with one away. James McCann up now for the Mets. Well, you got the number nine hole hitter right here. Looking to do whatever he can to get on base, turn this lineup over so the best hitters in this lineup have a chance to tie up the ball game or maybe even walk it off. So now a pinch hitter for the catcher, Dominic Smith. One out, the base is loaded. Big spot for him. And he deals. That one finds the corner. That's strike one. In the infield at the corners, don't be surprised to see them come home first. 
and prevent that run from scoring. In the air, out to center. Bellinger makes the grab. To the plate, safe. And we are tied. A big two-out hit, and the game is tied. Productive at bat for sure right there. Nice sack fly, ties up the ball game, and now they've got a little more way to go ahead. And now the center fielder, Brandon Nimmo. The pitch. And that's outside. The Dodgers bullpen with some action. Alex Vesia looks to be getting ready for manager Dave Roberts. Grotterol, the hard throwing right hander, up as well. Next offering is in for a strike. And a 1 1. And that one fouled off. The one two and a swing and a miss good job of damage control right there he's in a tough spot had to make taking over on the mound for the Mets Edwin Diaz and this guy can bring it velocity wise Tomas Nito the new catcher now now catcher Number three. All set for the start of the inning. And at the plate for the Dodgers, Freddie Freeman. Man at second, nobody out. Chris, certainly one of the things in his head is trying to get the runner over. Yeah, the way that we see the game played today, though, guys are not sacrificing as much just to get that runner across. They're really looking at doing damage. Slugging is the name of the game. Next pitch misses. It's a ball and two strikes. Got him! And they get the leadoff man in the tent. Well, big power guy right there and generating so much bat speed. It's hard to bring that to a halt once you've committed. They tried to check the swing, just couldn't do it. Here's Max Muncy, that funky Muncy. The pitch. And he takes one right on the black. Strike one. Well, it's kind of deflating. You blow that lead in the bottom of the ninth. So here's a new opportunity. Hit the reset button, try to get some more runs, and then close it out in the bottom half of this one. Swing and a miss. Handcuffed him with that slider. That's out number two. Nice work there to get the strikeout, and that's a big second out. I'll tell you, this home crowd will be fired up. They can get out of this and leave that go-ahead run stranded in scoring position. This is a big moment in this game. And up to the plate is Will Smith. Intentional walk here with two out. They set up a force at any base to end the inning. How big a deal is that walk? I don't think it's a big deal because if you pitch to the previous hitter with the power he has, he can hit home run. I think it was a calculated walk. We'll see how it pays off here. Tosses to first, and Turner is retired. Third out, and that ends the frame. On to the bottom of inning number 10, and we are tied 4-4. They turn things over to the southpaw, Alex Vesia. Hasn't pitched in a while. He's had the last five days off. Welcome back. Bottom of the inning. And now the right fielder, Starling Marte. Look for him to hit behind the runner, perhaps shoot it to the right side. And here it comes. And a good fastball to start him off. That's strike one. Yeah, Boog, if you're that base runner at second base, you want to be quiet out there. Not bouncing around, not distracting your teammate, the hitter. Make sure that he can clearly focus on that pitcher and that release point. Fly ball down the line. Applies the tag, and they get two. Double play. When you're already in scoring position, if you decide to tag, you really want to be more than 100% confident that you can make it safely to third, because otherwise, you take a potential run scoring opportunity off the board. Great throw to third. Now up to hit, Francisco Lindor. 
and a pitch. And he flips a breaking ball in there or a changeup. Either one. <laughs> Something off speed. Good arm action on it, whatever it was. The next pitch misses, and it's one and one. All tied up here in extra innings. Next offering is in for a strike. Kicks and deals. And now the count is even. Popped up foul territory behind the plate. Over near the wall. Smith makes the catch, and that'll do it. On to inning number 11 we go, and we are tied 4-4. New inning getting started, and up to the plate comes Cody Bellinger. Listen, there's absolutely no reason to pitch to this guy right here. You nibble, you see if he'll expand his zone, but don't give him anything to hit. If you walk him, not a big deal. You have a double play opportunity set up. Backed off the plate that time. Next offering misses, and a count two and one. The two one. Slow roller to first. Alonso steps on the bag. One up, one down. Chris Taylor down. And this is a big opportunity for him to pick up his teammate right here. The pitch. That misses the zone. One and oh. Definitely a strikeout situation right here. Lots of and now the runner breaks for the plate. A squeeze, and he gets it down. Off balance throw in time. They get the out, but the go-ahead run scores on the play. Well, there's a lot going on during a suicide squeeze, and it's not hard to mess it up. But they made that play look easy right there. Great job at the plate getting the butt down. Now, Austin Barnes. They say it went. And that one fouled off. Starting to get some pretty good timing on that breaking ball, but he's going to have to stay ready for a fastball. Don't want to watch one go right by you. Next pitch is outside. Really nice slider right there, sweeping across the dish, but just couldn't hang the edge. And a 1-2 again. That one fouled off. And a ball and two strikes. Barnes checks his swing. Now it appealed to first, and he held up. Here's the 2-2. Stays alive. Well, he's having a tough time getting a pitch by him. As a hitter, you feel pretty confident that you're seeing different pitches still able to make some type of contact. The next offering misses, and the count's full. Grinding A.B. right here, about to see pitch number 10. Fouled off again, and it remains 3-2. and two. And a swing and a miss, and that's that. Last shot here as we go to the bottom of the 11th. It's the Dodgers 5 and the Mets 4. Back here in Queens, all set for the bottom of the 11th. Leading off, Pete Alonso. Well, look out here. He's going to come up ready to swing in this situation. And yeah, the first offering is not close. Next offering is in for a strike. And now the lefty. And strike two. Clearly he was sitting on a fastball right there. It just ended up out in front of the slider. Hey, you can't fault him for his commitment. Now he's just going to have to battle with two strikes. And a swing and a miss. Now one away. Here's Mark Canna. Oh, how he'd love to walk it off right here. And yeah, the pitch. And a swing and a miss there. And the 0-1. 
Next offering misses down and away. Ball to strike. Check swing, appeal to first. And he won around just enough that time. And a foul ball, he stays alive. Swing and a miss, struck him out. Back-to-back -back strikeouts. Definitely made him chase a little bit out of the zone yeah, right there. I don't think that's a strike if he takes it. Pretty textbook pitching. Get ahead in the count, get the guy in the box on his heels, and then force him to chase your pitch where he doesn't have much of a chance to do any damage. Now at the plate, Eduardo Escobar. Trying to deliver as the hero. Hit hard on the ground is short. Throw to first, ball game. And the Dodgers strand the tying run on base to win it. Back here at PNC Park with Chris Singleton, I'm John Shambi. Thanks for joining us. Nobody out here in inning number eight. The Mets with a formidable lead at the top of their division. Singy, they got to be feeling pretty close to invincible. Yeah, and that can also be sort of a dangerous situation because if complacency creeps in and all of a sudden you run into a hot team, especially when you've got big expectations in the postseason, you could go home really disappointed. The left fielder, Mark. Fonda back to work. Canna takes a strike as he leads things off. Some activity in the bullpen for the Pirates. Sam Howard loosening up in case he's called upon by Derek Shelton. Peters getting loose as well. It's getting squeezed a little bit here late. Next offering is in for a strike. Of course, it's fine to play well early on, but you really want to be peaking in the fall when it really matters. Here's a one-two. Up the middle. Sends it to Vogel back. And that's one away as the leadoff man is out in the eighth. Eduardo Escobar up now for the Mets. He's a big, strong guy, can untie this game with one swing. And the pitch is in for a strike. Strike one. Next one misses, and the count is one and one. In there. And so now one and two. Definitely got the hitter conscious of the pitch inside. I really think the outer half is open. In the air, right field. Gamble puts the squeeze on that one. And there are two down. Next is the designated hitter, designated Dominic hitter. Smith. Dominic Smith. A wide to kick the pitch. There's the strike. Next pitch misses. One and one. And a swing and a line drive at a right field. Gamble makes the catch. And that'll do it. Mets go down quickly. This game's all tied at four. 
and welcome back. And here's the catcher, Henry Davis. This is a guy who is very highly regarded defensively. Fun to watch him control stuff behind the plate. Good game caller, good at framing, but it's that big arm that really stands out. And there's a foul ball. Yeah, and because he's got the big arm, he pays attention to the running game and is sure to manage it. And the pitch stays alive. Tied at four. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. One gone here. Toughest pitch to hit. Fastball on the outer black. Man, sometimes you just got to tip your cap. The batter now, Kevin Newman. The pitch. And a foul ball. Right-hander kicks, deals. Fouled off. He was late. And the righty deals. Ball one low. Play foul. One ball, two strikes. Got him looking. Down on strikes, and he knew it. Well, that's not the best two-strike fastball I've seen, but certainly got away with the location there. You know, sometimes as a hitter, when you're down in the count, you're so focused on a pitcher painting the black, and you just get a little bit locked up on something down the heart of the plate, not expecting it, and it just kind of freezes you. The pitch. There's the strike. Next offering is in for a strike. I understand you want to try to gauge that guy's fastball, but you also have to be aggressive and ready to hit in your zone. Now you're in a tough spot. Next offering misses. Yeah, the count one and two. Up the middle. Toss to Alonzo, and we stay tied as the inning ends. Bucks go down quietly, still all square at four apiece. Michael Chavis comes on defensively now as he takes over as the new second baseman. Now playing second base. Back here in Pittsburgh, now it's the second baseman, Luis Guillorme. You know, this is kind of a tough matchup as a left-handed hitter facing a left-handed pitcher. What you tell yourself is, I want to stay. Lays out. Oh, it's off his glove. Fires to first, and they get the leadoff man in the ninth. Up next for the net. Tomas Nito, the Tomas. next to hit. And Chris, his big strength is defense. But it is interesting, in today's world of baseball, compared to when you played, a good defensive catcher is considered differently. Whatever you get offensively is a bonus. But he's got to put the fingers down. He's got to present pitches to the umpire. They're going to help his pitcher get more strikes. Back to the top of the lineup. Here's the Mets leadoff man, Brandon Nimmo. Makes the grab, and that'll end the inning. To the bottom of the ninth we go. Top of the order, do up. And we are tied 4-4. Back here at the ballpark, we head to the bottom of the ninth. Down the third baseman, Key Brian Hayes. And a pitch. Third baseman. Top of the zone, and it's called a strike. Oh, one down. Foul off down the right side. Hit softly on the ground to third. Escobar with the throw to first. One out, bottom of the nut. Here's Ben Gamble. The pitch. That one inside. And that is ball one. Next pitch downstairs. Two and oh. He's been raking in recent games, and a big reason why getting ahead in counts. He's been able to do that consistently, and you see the results. He makes the catch, and there's two down. Brian Reynolds here. Here comes a pitch. That one finds the zone. 
One one. Well, an at bat can be a little bit of a dance. Strike one here, but a few more pitches. We'll ah. see how it turns out. Next offering is in for a strike. This guy's pounding the zone. Hitters don't have time to think in between pitches. Not oh. close with that one, and the count is one and two. Four four in the ninth. Lifted in the air out to left. Drops into the glove, and that is that. Down in order go the Pirates. Score remains tied at four. On to extra innings. Now it's the right fielder, Starlin Marte. Look for him to hit behind the runner, perhaps shoot it to the right side. The pitch. And yeah, ball one to the right fielder. Well, Boog, if you're that base runner at second base, you want to be quiet out there. Not bouncing around, not distracting your teammate, the hitter. Make sure that he can clearly focus on that pitcher and that release point. And the 1 0. Laser! Base hit! Here comes the runner! In there safely! Well done, drives in the run. Anytime you rip a line drive the other way, you feel really good about what you did at the plate. You trusted your hands, you let the ball travel, and you took the barrel straight to it. That's great work right there. And now it's Frankie Lindor. Fonda back to work. Pitch misses, and it's 1 0. Kicks and fires. And that's downstairs and outside. The pitch. And he flips a breaking ball in there or a changeup. Either one. <laughs> Something off speed. Good arm action on it, whatever it was. Fonda picks over. Marte back easily. Two on that. Marte of the move. That one the other way. Takes it in for the out. Takes it to the bag himself and doubles him off. Two outs, base is empty. Pete Alonso now at the plate. He's not going to get cheated up there. No, he's not. He's looking to do damage with every swing he takes. And the first pitch misses for ball one. Out front with the swing, and that is strike one. One thing on his mind right there with that swing. He's trying to go deep. Next offering is in for a strike. The other way, and he beats the shift. Takes the turn. He's digging for second. In safely. It's a double, and his second hit. Love how he let that ball travel, trusted his hands. Nice job of going the other way. So two down now, and here is Mark Canna. And the pitch. Good eye right there. Alonso stands at second with two gone. Next offering in the dirt. Now 2-0. Oh. Well, no need to go right at this guy. First base is open. He can hurt you, so make him expand his zone if he doesn't. Give him a walk. And a foul ball. Makes the count two and one. Two outs. That misses the zone. And now three and one. Man on second, two down. That's a strike.
three two down. So now two on and two outs. You get a walk and you get a walk. Everyone gets a walk, boo. Now First and second, two down. So up next for New York, Eduardo Escobar. So RBI spot, but Chris, this is a guy that is not really swinging the bat all that well here. In this situation, you have a real good opportunity to get swings and misses and record a strikeout. I think you attack him in this spot. The lefty, the 1-0. And yeah, there's a ball. Misses with the 2-0, and he's fired three straight outside the strike zone. Out there to center. Puts the squeeze on that one, and that'll end the inning. So one run in the inning on this base hit. It's down to one at 5-4. So they turn to Edwin Diaz out of the pen, trying to protect this lead. On to the bottom of the 10th. Here's Daniel Vogel back. This is what stat nerds like myself might call a high leverage situation. Yeah, but not sure what the numbers say, but clearly an at bat that could change the course of this game dramatically. Squibbed out in front of the plate. Over to first. And here in the 10th, the leadoff man is out. Good two-seam action right there, running away from the batter. The batter Rolled over it, 15. got the ground out. Here's O'Neill Cruz. Oh, yeah. oh, how he'd love to walk it off right here. First offering, misses the mark. I wonder how much of a distraction those fans behind home plate are to the opposing pitcher. I mean, they are into it. They're trying to will this claw back into this ball game. And it's second. He swings and fouls one off. One away. The winning run at second. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Two away. Boog gets talked about a lot, but a good high fastball in a two strike situation, it's just become such a problem for hitters in more recent years. But with all of the emphasis by pitchers on developing that spin rate, having a good grip on the baseball, those high fastballs, they kind of look like to the hitter that they're rising, even though they're not, but they're not decreasing in velocity and spin rate. So very difficult to get the barrel on. New York just one out away, try to close it out. And now one strike away. Oh, they're applying pressure. Quality at bats, quality swings right now. And see this offense. And a swing and a miss. And that ends the ball game. The tying run left stranded at second. So the New York Mets with another win. It got close, but they pulled away. Nice job to not let the losses pile up, Chris. Well, boo, that's why they're in this position. I mean, they've risen to the occasion any time they've been tested this season. It, it tells you something about the character of this club, the way they respond to adversity. I mean, they dropped a couple of games, upped their energy a bit, and got right back on track. And, no, that's what champions do. And this team has been looking like a real contender all season long. Back here in Pittsburgh with Chris Singleton, I'm John Shambi. Thanks for joining us. Nobody out here in inning number eight. The Mets with a big opportunity today. The chance to clinch a division crowned with a win. Singing even with the predictions that they'd be contenders, still a big accomplishment just to be in this position. Yeah, Boog, the season isn't played in your analytic shredder. It's played on the field, brother, and they've backed up the hype so far. Welcome back. Ready to begin the eighth. And now Dominic Smith. Swing and a miss. And that is strike one. You get that win today, you lock up the division title, and then you start thinking about how you want to approach the postseason. Grounded to Chavis. Chavis collects. Chavis fires over to first. Leadoff man is out here in the eighth. 
now batting. Jeff Second McNeil baseball. stands in. Jeff McNeil. Plenty of offense in this one, Singy. I guess you'd say kind of what we expected, though. Well, this was a game looking at the pitching matchup where you expected offense to score and not as lopsided as this. Um, but yeah, you definitely expected to see some offense coming up. Strike two. Out to center. Grabs it on the run. And yeah, there's two away. James McCann up now for the Mets. The wind of the pitch. Out front, rip foul. The wind of the pitch. Now one and one. This one popped up right side. Vogelback makes the catch, and that'll do it. On to the bottom of the eighth, and now the Pirates leadoff man, Greg Allen. For the Pirates, the left fielder. And here it comes. In for a strike, strike one. Oh, and an 0-0 count. Not every strike is a good strike for a hitter. I like the plate discipline there. Fought off foul. The next pitch misses. Now one and two. That one not close. And it's two and two. Riding to the plate. And a foul ball. He stays alive. Left hand batter waits. And that one in the air center field. And puts the squeeze on that. One away. Well, just about to hit that century mark. A hundred pitches in this game. So digging in, Cole Tucker. And he's already singled in this game. Taken high in the draft. He's had that top prospect labeled over him since he put on a professional uniform. But at some point, that starts to go away, and you've got to produce at the big league level. Brian Reynolds, the next pirate to hit. One for two. Check swing, but he went too far. Going one. Well, as good as things can be, it can be a tough day at the office, even for the skippers. Seeing the offense. This one's into the gap in left center, and that should be extra bases. Round second, digging for third. He's in there. Another multi-hit game for him. He's been really hot lately. Man, I love the hustle out of the box right there to make that triple happen. And just an absolute laser into the opposite field gap. He was digging hard the entire way. Two outs with a man at third. Daniel Vogelback digs in now. There comes a skipper out of the dugout, and he's ready to make the move. Tyler McGill gives way, and he leaves a runner at third. So we'll see how the next guy deals with that when we get back. Matt Barnes gets the nod out of the bullpen, and he's got a nice lead to work with. The pitch. Ball one, no strikes. Close, but call the ball. And the count is 2-0. and oh. Reynolds at third with two away. And a rope into center field, base hit. The run scores from third, and they're on the board, but lots of ground to make up. Well, that was one of those high percentage advantage yeah, counts where batting averages are just hitter. so much higher. Oh, yeah. Just a very nice approach and swing right there to use the big part of the field. Everything was on time. He stayed balanced through the entire swing and just launched that one into center. So, man aboard, O'Neill Cruz getting ready to hit. Well struck right field, way back, on its way. And that one's gone into the bleachers. 
He leaves the yard to right, and they inch closer. It's 16 to three. guy's got a real hard fastball you can't overswing all you've got to do is get the bat head to the spot if you do he supplies the power but you'll get to jog around the bases like he did right there here's Chavis now that one's in there on one yeah, this is a guy originally drafted as a shortstop he's got big time power and it's fouled away and the right hander deals Chavis from Sprayberry High School. And you know what? Spray something here and drive in a run. Line drive, short hop to third. Slings it across. That's the inning. Cannonball coming. Ninth inning coming up. You're watching Major League Baseball on the show. We go to the ninth at the play. Brandon Nimmo. Leading off for the Mets, the center fielder, Brandon Nimmo. The big lefty turns, kicks, deals. To the right side. Vogelback oh. takes it himself. One up, one down. The right now the number two two hitter, Starling Marte. Marte. The wind of the pitch. Hit in the air, right field. 2-2 two, two go. Under this one. Two down. Two now outs, base is empty. Shortstop. Here's the shortstop Francisco. at the play. Lindor. Francisco Lindor. You talk about elite defensive players, especially in the middle of the diamond, and this guy is at the top of the list. And now the lefty. And you played behind guys, and they loved having your speed out there defensively. One of the things that we talk about is how much pitchers enjoy having those elite defenders behind them. And a count one and two. And he deals. Yeah, the one two misses to even the count. Boog, and the one thing about that is speed never goes in a slump and defense shouldn't either hitting wise you can struggle you can lose your mechanics but the thing that you can do consistently every single ah that ends the inning so we take a break miguel castro taking over on the mound and he'll try to keep this big lead right where it is bottom of the ninth, and now the right fielder yoshi tutugo and there's the strike. The, Pirates, the right fielder, Yoshi Sutsuga. Next offering is fouled back. At the belt and fires. And that one wrapped foul. Castro throws what a lot of people consider to be a power sinker. Throws it with serious velocity, but it moves a ton and it stays down. That one ripped. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. And there's one down. The catcher, number 55. Roberto Perez standing in. And Chris, his big strength is defense. But it is interesting. In today's world of baseball, compared to when you played, a good defensive catcher is considered differently. Whatever you get offensively is a bonus. But he's got to put the fingers down. He's got to present pitches to the umpire. They're going to help his pitcher get more strikes. And Boog, against a guy like this, you grab your backup bat out of the rack. You don't want to take your gamer up there because you know there's a good chance it's coming back broken. One down, base is empty. Swings through that one. It's a strikeout. Now only one out remaining. Well, we saw a solid effort out of their starter, and the bullpen is following the suit. It's just a good day as a manager or as a pitching coach when you can hand the ball off to multiple arms and get stability from all of their performances. And now it's going to be Hoy Park for the fourth time tonight. And a pitch. And first offering is fouled off. 
What's the approach when you're facing a guy like this, Chris? Don't right. look down in the zone because you'll end up chasing something that's out of the strike zone. Make him elevate the pitch because he's not as effective. Ah. At the and they have clinched the division. The Mets are NL East champs. So the New York Mets with the win to secure the division title. Zingy, this is what they aimed for since the beginning of spring training. Yeah, and the expectations were there as well, Boog. So maybe they felt a bit of pressure at some point, but they really lived up to the hype. I mean, this is a terrific job from everyone in this franchise, and now they can really turn their focus to the postseason after a well-deserved celebration in the clubhouse, of course.